John, Roy, you stay put. I'm not getting out so you can beat me. I'm just dropping you off. You can walk home from here. What about Roy? Don't worry about Roy. He's a big boy. Get out. <laughs> start walking. Oh. I said start walking. Deceased. Oh, okay. How you doing? Pretty good. What do we got here? Well, our church security guy gave us a call. Found her curled up right here. Church security is this him over there? Come on over. Yeah. What can you tell us about this lady? She used to come by for the soup and sandwich at lunchtime, and uh, she'd come by at night sometimes to take a load off her feet. You know where she lived? No, I wouldn't know. No. You wouldn't know. All right. Oh, what's over this in the pocket here? Oh, what do we got here? It's like uh, different kinds of greens to me. It's barley, it's wheat. It's... What do you think? She used to sit on the steps during the day and feed the pigeons. She's the pigeon lady. This is her, the pigeon lady? Yeah, I've seen her right here on the steps. I was driving by. She'd just stand there with her arms out. Yeah. Yeah, there'd be half a dozen other things perched on her. Oh, man. Well, you know, she's all curled up here. She's got herself all nice and cozy for the night. And to me, you see, the strips of cardboard laid down there suggest to me homelessness. What about you? Yeah. Uh, I thought you guys uh, had your doors open all night. Yeah, we used to. You don't do that anymore? No, we stopped. It just got so, you know, too many people were using this as a permanent place to sleep, so uh, we locked it up at 10.30. When did that start happening? Uh, not long, about a month or so ago. So here, this woman, she shows up, she's just looking for a piece of sanctuary, and then she finds out that you don't offer that anymore? Yeah, no, we don't do that anymore, right? That's pretty rough. Well, you know, I'm really not seeing any obvious injuries here, so to me, this might just be a case of, uh... Just gave up the ghost. Maybe. What's that, midnight? Midnight, right? Yeah, midnight. Oh, I'm up at you now, won't I? Who owns Grand 
Granville Street. I can't hear you. Who owns Granville Street? That's right. Dino. I can't hear you, Roy. Who owns Granville Street? You do. Not so good looking now. He's not so pretty now. I'll come with you. Okay, we'll hurry up. I don't know if this is your call, but I thought you'd want to see this. This is Brian's garage. Yeah, I got the call from the landlady. She's inside. She's a bit broken up. Somebody shot her dog. Shot her dog? When was that? Anybody witness it? No, about an hour ago. She only just got the dog. It's one of those rescue dogs. She only just got him. What, from the uh, pound, you mean? Yeah. Uh, anyway, the dog... Starts barking, so she looks out the back door, can't see anything, but the dog's barking like crazy. So she calls up, thinks, you know, maybe somebody's trying to break into the house or the garage. A couple minutes later, she hears a gunshot, looks outside, and there's the dog limping up the stairs. Did Brian know she had a new dog? No, at least she hadn't told him about it. I asked that first thing. Did you ever search the garage? No, Brian cleaned house before the warrant went through. Looks like the dog was shot here by the gate, huh? Yeah, maybe the guy tried coming in the back, got surprised. Nobody saw anybody in the alley? No, she thought she might have heard a car, but that's about it. I got the constables doing the canvas. Where's the dog now? He's inside on her bed. She had him all wrapped up in blankets. Poor thing. Uh, find any shell casings around here? No, I couldn't find one. Get somebody down here when it's light. Take a good look around, see if they could find anything. You want to go in and talk to her? Yeah, I guess we're better. It's going to break your heart. Upstairs in this warehouse loft is kind of a, a bit of a rave, actually. Yeah. This young man is about to give the victim a walk around the block. She wanted to go for a walk and use his father, right? So he goes upstairs to find his buddy. He can't find him. He comes back down and he just sees her lying here. He doesn't know her name. She's just lying here. She's all busted up. Is that clip? Or what do you think happened here? Maybe standing out in the middle of the street, or maybe somebody's taking off from the party. I, he says there's a lot of ecstasy at this party. That's funny. That piece of a broken headlamp over here might be from the vehicle. What do you think? A lot of blood. Well, she's got an open head wound here. That's pretty severe. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. See where her hips punch her right through her skin, so I don't know. Maybe she's a severed artery or something. Real young. No, no. I don't suppose any of these witnesses have come forward and given you any useful information. The uh, two constables here say they saw a silver Mercedes go by. Silver Mercedes? Yeah, a little bit block down that way. And then about five minutes later, they got this call, so that's all we got. Any plate? Oh, partial, but yeah, it's probably not related. Yeah. Any sign of burned rubber? Is any sign that the car tried to avoid no. Nothing. No, no name. Well, first name might be Alice, okay? She had on a bracelet. It's all broken. The kind of these individual letters, right? You see? I sorted out the letters two or three times. Came up with Alice. See? Alice. So, Alice. Didn't you wish you'd gone home a little time? I didn't want to waste your time, but the coroner thought you might want to take a look. And we thought this might be significant, so we taped it off. Great. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, first day, first call, so I thought I'd better play safe. You got the gig. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, you're working for the coroner now. Yeah, yeah, first day. Uh, da Vinci was supposed to go around with me, but he got caught up with something else, and uh, I'm here by myself. Right on. Show us what we got. Yeah, young kid over here. Looks like a train got him. Lost a leg. See that? Uh, but it looks like you took a beating before that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He looks native, huh? Yeah. His clothes are looking pretty new. 
Yeah, they had a bunch of dope on him. A little weed, some acid, it looked like maybe uh, ecstasy. I got his name, Roy. Roy something. Uh, French sounding last name. I think. I, I got his wallet too. All right, let's see here. Looks like Roy Cardinal. Could be Métis. Uh, yeah, I, I found his other shoe over on the other side there. I left it over there on the other side of the track. I took a, a walk around while I was waiting, and there was a blood trail. I think it was a blood trail. Let's uh, go take a look at this other body part. Yeah. May want to watch for some teeth around. Looks like he's maybe lost a couple in this beating here. All right. Did you get your pictures yet? Oh, no. I, I forgot. That's OK. You know, I was up all night trying to figure out how to, how to download this thing. Well, it's OK. Just snap off a few now. Close up. So uh, I'm, I'll erase all these other ones first here. There's uh, <laughs> hey, a picture of my wife. See? Oh, uh, yeah, nice. Oh, and the kids. How <laughs> many kids you got there? Three. Huh? Hell races, all of them. I don't know who's worse. <laughs> Her or them. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, take some pictures. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Whatever this is, I think you should take the lead on it. Why is that? Because I know this guy. I had a couple of run-ins with him before, and I don't want him getting all bent because I'm on the case. Fine. What's his deal? Oh, he handles big-time cases. Money laundering works for the bikers sometimes. He's, uh, what do you call it? A facilitator. Puts different guys together, brokers a deal. Sounds like a diplomat for the criminal classes. Yeah, well, you answer questions. I'll jump in if I think you're missing anything. Right over here. In the inner office there. I'm all right. Just a little shook up. I won't be able to make lunch. Hey, I'll just be out of your way in one second here. OK. We seen that last shot. Who we got here? This is Michael Zang. He had an appointment with uh, Mr. Norton. Single shot to the head. Yeah, it's a single shot to the head, OK. You talked to Norton about it yet? Yeah. What he said happened was they were in the middle of a discussion regarding Mr. Zhang's probable conviction on money laundering charges, and they get to the good part where he's going to cooperate with the Crown. Mr. Zhang apparently gets very moody, reaches into his coat, pulls out a weapon, and shoots himself. Any other witnesses? No, they sent the secretary out for cappuccinos, I think. Any reason to doubt the story here? Well, no. Nothing's really jumping out at me, but I just needed some confirmation. I've known Mr. Norton since I was in high school, and I just thought maybe it was worth, worth your time. So keep me informed, OK? Yep, we'll talk to you later. Okay, perfect. Oh, um, Chick's on his way, so any minute. Okay, good. Well, I guess we should step outside, wait till forensics gets done. Yeah. Okay, take it easy. Yeah, thanks, Dominic. Hey, I forgot to ask, how's the family? Oh, not bad, I guess. How's yours? Uh, divorced almost 11 years no now. No way. Both kids are in university, though. Well, that's pretty good. How'd you do that? Just a question, Dominic. Why'd you bring homicide in on this? Something not look right? Well, procedure. This is a normal procedure. You, know, you got a gunshot situation right there. They're going to want to take a look. That's the normal. You know that. You know, just play along. They'll be out of your hair in no time. All right, thanks. Just uh, got court this afternoon. Oh, yeah? Well, no. Just talk to detectives, give them your statement. I can't imagine how that would infringe on that. OK, good. You, said, you know how hard it is to find a court date that works for everybody. I'd hate to have to blow it off. Yeah, well. If suicides, they can be so inconsiderate. You know what I meant. Inconvenient, I think I meant to say. Just take it easy. The old woman at the church, she had tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Well, that means I'm getting tested. Yeah, me too. TB's been on the increase lately. See, it's another one of those diseases that we thought we'd eradicate it. They just lie dormant until conditions get ripe, and then they reappear again. Right. Come on in. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we better stay on top of that and find out where she's been staying and saying who she's been in contact with. We can't ignore this one. Well, if you want a picture to circulate, I've got one. Okay. Now, this church where we found her, you know, they're closing their doors at 10.30 at night now. Well, I wasn't aware. Yeah, because they used to keep them open all night, right? It's a refuge. But now this woman, she's been living outside that church's door since before everybody got kicked out of there. Well, I think she probably would have passed away whether she was inside or outside, if that helps. Okay. 
There was also a large quantity of undigested grain in her stomach. Well, yeah, we found grain on her. It was in her pocket because she's feeding the pigeons with it. Yeah, maybe more like she shared it with them because she had definitely been consuming large quantities. Oh. Well, hungry, I guess. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot more women, older women, than I used to on the street, it seems. That's probably due to the cutbacks for the women's services. I told them. Mm. Okay, now what else? Oh, yeah. What are we doing the autopsy on that hit and run, that young girl? I was going to start around three if you're fine with that. I'm fine with that. Not going to wait if you're late. No, I'm always there. I'll be there. That's perfect for me. Three o'clock. And we should probably, if you have any time this week, do you want to um, have some lunch and catch up on some other things, too? Like what, for instance? I'm sure we can sit down and come up with something. Oh, it's an excuse for lunch. Well? Oh, OK. Yeah? It's your call. You know where to find okay. me. OK. I'll just, oh, say hello to um, Noel. Noel. Sorry. This is Noel. He's filling in for Helen while well, she's away. So I'll check my calendar. OK, I'll see you at 3. Can you do me a favor? Uh, Tuberculosis, okay? You want to get hold of the health department. Find out everything that's going on there and what they're saying. You're writing all this stuff down. Oh, yeah. And that's what Helen does. Yeah, oh, uh, the mayor just called. He wants to talk to you. The mayor? Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you put him through? Well, you seemed occupied, so. Okay, so uh, what, what did he say you want to? He wants you to drop by when you have some time. Drop by? Hmm. Well, that's bad news. Really? It's not good, no. It's if it's good news, he's just gonna call me up. Bad news face to face. That's bad news, Mo. He said you've spoken to the Crown Prosecutor and that he'd offered a reduced sentence if Mr. Zhang would cooperate. Right. I called Mr. Zhang to come in and I'd explain it to him. What was the proposed deal? Mr. Zhang would testify as to how his money laundering was structured and name some of the participants. And then in return, he'd get a reduced sentence. And I assume this wasn't the first time that you discussed the implications of him testifying against people. He'd given his assent to negotiating with the Crown on this. Right. We were discussing the possibility of him serving his time in protective custody. And then I guess the reality of it sank in, and he felt he had no other choice. Came as a complete surprise to you? Yes, it did. You were sitting behind your desk when he pulled the weapon? Yes. What was your reaction? I didn't have time to react. I think I shouted something, and he pulled the trigger. Who was the first person you saw after that? I think it was my assistant. She'd just come back from getting coffee? That's right. I asked her to get a couple of coffees at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, well, I see you got a coffee pot in the office here. Looks like you were working on a full pot. Mr. Zhang asked for a cappuccino. Now, I have an important court date this afternoon. I wonder if we could do this later. Just a couple more questions and you can go. Why'd you wash your hands before we got here? I had some blood on them from when I tried to tip his head forward to maybe stop the blood flow. And then I saw it was useless. That was a fatal shot. And you felt it was necessary to wash your hands first thing? I had blood on them. It's a normal reaction. What did you shout? What? You said you shouted something when he pulled the gun out. I have no idea. Stop, don't, something like that. OK, why don't you give us a quick rundown on Mr. Zhang's criminal associates? I don't see how that might be relevant. Well, if he was threatened by one of these associates, then maybe it explains why he chose suicide. I'm not entirely aware of all his associations. Start with the ones you know. Hey, Dominic. Hey, Zach, how's it going? Good. Hey, uh, you got a sec? Uh, not really. I got to go see the mayor. Why? What's on your mind? Well, we got a uh, plate on this silver Mercedes, right? The one that the two constables reported? Oh, yeah, and? Yeah. WGQ 543. Does it ring any bells for I you? I can't even find my keys. I can't even break. Oh, come on. It's a friend of yours. Who's that? The mayor. The mayor? Is this correct? What's he saying? Well, he's saying he woke up this morning, you know, he went after the driveway to come into work. It's gone. Stolen from his driveway? Yeah. Did he report it? Yeah, we haven't found it yet. But look, I understand that you were with the mayor last night, right? This dinner thing in Chinatown. That was last right? night. Just... See, that should have been in my calendar. Ah, well, I can uh, confirm this with somebody else, right? Okay. So I'm going to go over to the accident site and take a look. You want to come? No, you can come back. Yeah, I thought I'd look around, see if I can shake a witness loose, right? You can probably look. Yeah. What time is the autopsy? Uh, I think it's at 3. Okay. Try to make that. What? Is that why you came down here all the way to see me, just asking what time the autopsy is going to be at? Oh, you know, I thought if you're going to get this chief's job, right? What? You know, you're going to need, like, a strong right hand, right? Somebody who knows a force pretty good. Somebody who's been in the loop for a while, right? You know, somebody to help you navigate the politics, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that sounds pretty good. I probably need somebody like that. Why, you got somebody in mind? Well, me, right? Is it? Yeah. Why would you be interested in something like that? I don't get that. Well, you know, I've been doing what I've been doing for a while, right? It's time for change. Yeah. Well, right hand to me? Okay, well, sure. I'll put your hat in the ring. Yeah. 
You know, because look, I know the troops pretty well, okay? I know who's who, I know what's what. Mm -hmm. Okay. You and me, we got a shorthand, right? Yeah, that's in the ring. Okay. Uh, that's good. I appreciate it. Uh, Look, you get a chance, you know, ask the mayor about this dinner thing. Okay? Oh, the mayor, he's going to be yelling at me. He's going to tell me all about it, for sure. Okay. I'm going to have to ask him anything. Take it easy. Let me know. What's the matter? I could just cry. I can't, I can't remember where I put my car again. <laughs> that's not funny. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. Okay. Okay. I started leading the interview, and then you took over. I was wondering if I was taking it the wrong direction. No, 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 I apologize. I just lost my patience with the guy because all that bullshit about washing your hands being a natural reaction. He washed his hands because he knew it would make a gunshot residue test useless. I was getting around to that in case you were wondering. I just lost my patience. You think he shot the guy? Yeah, probably. I want to talk to Mr. Zhang's wife. I can just feel this guy swimming away. He's like a damn eel. That thing about the secretary going off for coffee, that's all. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, Suki asked me to find out if you were dating anybody. Really? What'd you say? Well, I said I didn't know, because I don't. Yeah, I thought she was going out with somebody. I seem to remember something about that. No, no, that's over with. So, you want me to set something up, huh? Let her know you're going to give her a call? No, I think I can handle that. Just some of a bitch about that dog last night, right? Yeah. Good instincts, Lou. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm just on my way out. Walk with me, all right? How are you? Oh, all right. Good. How's it looking? Uh, well, there's dissension. What? Yeah, basically, the police board is split right down the middle. And what it comes down to is the issue of the red light district. They want assurances that that's not going to come up again. So I cave on the red light district and I'm in? Well, that'd help. I mean, if I could take that back to the board that that's a dead issue, I mean, that might shift the vote. It might shift the vote. So what else is there? Well, that's the main objection. Well, okay, this is on the issues. That's good. Yeah. I mean, there's a, uh, well, there's a character issue, too. What? The issue of your, how should I, uh, outspokenness. What, is it my general big mouth, or is it in, in particular? Yeah, in particular, your views on the safe injection site, and also your general habit of poking a stick in the eye of the Americans over their drug policy. They keep calling me up. They keep asking my opinion. Look, here, this is now the Olympic City. I know. All right, so in view of that fact, a less confrontational approach might be prudent. That's all. Okay. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I swear to God, I will. Good. And I'll take that to the police board, and it will be very appreciative. All right. Oh, uh, I suppose you heard about my car being involved in that hit and run, huh? Yeah, I did. Uh, that hasn't been confirmed yet, though. It was spotted near the scene. That's all I know at this point. Did they find the car? Uh, no. Oh, I, I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> Whether it's my car or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's a terrible thing. It's terrible. I guess that girl was pretty young. 16. I got to phone her parents. Nobody can reach them. They're, apparently they're, they're sailing around in the Caribbean somewhere. Well, let me know. I'll call them, too. Hey, did you ever hear exactly what happened? It's one of those things. We may never find the driver, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, that's it. I just wanted to touch base with you on the uh, red light district, and I will take that to the police board. Well, I appreciate you keeping me in the loop on this. And when do you think we might get an answer? Oh, man, I've had to ask the present chief to stay on for another month, but I hope any time, any day. But anyway, you'll be the first to know. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, but I missed that dinner last night. I meant to come there. Yeah, I could have used some help on that. They came after me pretty good over the safe injection site. Now, I like mud. It gives a good deep impression, and it clings to the undercarriage of the car. And this is good mud. It's not a business. It's from somewhere else. They brought in landfill or something. Yeah. Now, unless somebody does a real good job washing the bottom of the car, you know, a truck or whatever, there's bound to be some residue. You know, some of the mud, maybe some gravel, maybe even some of the tall grass over there. We want to watch out for uh, teeth underfoot here, because uh, looks like he's lost a few. I'm assuming from the beating. Mm, okay. And you said you had something else you wanted to show me? Yeah, right over here. So I, I don't know what would have left this impression. Right here? Maybe a stick or something? Yeah. Okay, I'll get a mold of that. Also, I think you got more than two people here. I think you got three. You see three here? Yeah. The kid, the driver. And there's another footprint, just the one on this side of the vehicle here. Mm. And it's not very deep. This isn't very comfortable, but it's private anyway. I'm sorry for your loss. My condolences. Must be a very hard time. I don't understand. Where did he get the gun? Your husband didn't own a gun? Well, maybe, but I never saw one. Did he drive to the lawyer's office, do you know? 
Yes. Why? Well, we haven't been able to locate his car. Well, he drove. Do you know what happened to the money he had with him? I wasn't aware that he had any money with him. How much are we talking about? Well, I don't know exactly. Several hundred thousand dollars. Several hundred thousand. Well, that's interesting. Okay, can you hang on a second? Just wait here. I'll be right back. It's the fourth time. Look, normally I wouldn't complain, but it's the fourth time I've ordered from you guys and you put salsa on the bagel again. And I specifically said, no salsa. Leo, I have Mrs. Zhang in interview. Hang on, I'm dealing with this here. I don't like salsa. I specifically said, no salsa. Well, then why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off then? I said, why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off? Have you ever tried to scrape salsa off a of cream cheese? It melts. Leo, Mrs. Zhang is saying there's a load of money missing. I don't want you to miss this. Okay, all right. My mom's making rich chocolate Ovaltine. Yeah! My kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And I love that there are vitamins and minerals not found in Nesquik powder. We're back. Who wants Ovaltine? Me! Let's make more. More Ovaltine, please! I can now do what I want, go where I will, and I'm free again. My name is Frank Paris. My name is Mary Simmons. I'm Babs Miller. My name is Vera Brown. Real people, real lives, improve dramatically because they call the Scooter Store. Hi, I'm Dan Weston. Here's what our customers have to say. I'd say the biggest impact the chairs had on my life is just the independence that I got back. Just to sit outside and see the sunshine was more of a blessing than I can tell anybody. The power chair gives me the independence that I need to get around. I, I love the power chair. I was having trouble walking, and now I can get in my uh, chair and just fly up the hall, and I love it. <laughs> One word that would describe the power chair is independence. This is wonderful. We're America's largest power chair provider, so you can relax, knowing we'll take care of all the details for you. The scooter store worked miraculously with my doctor. I mean, I was just amazed. They were able to take care of everything, so all I had to do was just wait for it to arrive. I didn't have to do anything. And if we pre-qualify you for a new power chair and Medicare denies your claim, we allow you to keep your new power chair at no cost. When Medicare declined payment, the scooter store told me that I didn't have to worry about the chair was mine. I love mine. Absolutely love it. A life-changing experience is what I call the scooter store. And I think the power chair was like a miracle. Now it's your turn. Call the scooter store today. Change your life today. Call the scooter store at 1-866-210-3187. That's 1-866-210-3187. Hi, can you tell me, how are the rooms at that hotel? Very nice curtains. And TV has video games. Uh-huh. And, and the rooms at your hotel? There's a bed and some tables. Right. Want to talk to someone who really knows hotels? Call the experts at Hotels.com. They've got the inside scoop on over 70,000 properties. They're available 24-7, and they'll always find you the best price guaranteed. Just log on or call 800-2-HOTELS-NOW. Hotels.com. You know hotels inside and out. We need to find another snitch pretty quick. Now Rick's dead. I'm like a chicken with my head cut off and the street scene's going crazy and I'm, I'm standing here naked. You got any good candidates? What about Sue? She knows everybody. I don't know. I don't know if she's consistent. We need, you know, to develop somebody who's going to be around for a while. Your friends are here. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Brian. What do you say? Well, how are you? Just talking about Rick Prentice. Is there anything new there? Not a thing. Stone cold. I was just saying to Marla, the guy was like a friend. You know? What'd you do to your hands? Such a dumbass. I was fixing a flat and just got caught and just ripped it. I don't know why I said wasn't good infected. Thanks for the concern. Maybe you can uh, kiss it better for me. <laughs> <laughs> they so pissed me off. They're gonna ask. So we were talking snitches? Yeah, are you saying Sue? You're gonna have to work her, because I don't think she trusts me 100%. Maybe I'll try my own approach then. Maybe wait till she's hurting for dope, pick her up, and turn her. Play rough with her, huh? Ooh, nasty. Hey, you're ripping off on you. I like it.
just got to bust the headlamp on the left side. It's got to be the one, right? This is the mayor's car. Yes, sir. So he was at that meeting down in Chinatown, so I understand. So he was. Yeah, you got crushed here, you got stuff crushed, yeah. definitely. Yes, sir. So what, is this about five minutes from that crime scene? Yeah, you just head straight down commercial, hang a left, and wheel in here, and nobody here at night. So what, ident's on their way, or what's happening there? Well, eventually, they're tied up somewhere. They are. Oh, what's that? Oh, gotta love that. Yeah, cell phone. Let's though. answer it. You don't get oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know, the I know, I know. Just the... I know. You want to grab it? Okay, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Come on. Okay. Okay. Have it up. Yeah. Who's this? No, I'm sorry. You're breaking up. No, no, no. Right. Uh, no, this is uh, Zach McNamara with the Vancouver PD Action Investigation uh, Unit. Yeah, I mean down here with uh, Dominic. It's the mayor. He says hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We found the car. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess this is your phone too, right? Okay. Sure. Sure, will do. Okay, nice talking to you. Yep. Zach McNabb. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, look, look, look. While I got you on the phone, uh, I mean, I know this doesn't swing much weight or anything, but uh, I just thought I'd lobby a little bit for Dominic. You know, I think you'd make a real nice choice. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you. Lost your cell phone. Couldn't remember where he put it. You ever do that? You know, like phone your cell phone and you lost it. That's why I carry two. I'm always losing my cell phone. So what do you say? Well, he wants his cell phone back. Well, no. Well, I know. We're going to hang on to it, you know, go for prints, you know, check the numbers, make sure that they can make any calls, right? Okay, thanks. And uh, there's some fibers on here. You can saw those for sure. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe we should do the collection down here before we move the car to the garage. That was a plan. You already planned it? Well, good. Yeah. Hey, I gave you a good plug there, huh? You all catch right. that? Yeah, good job, Zach. Thanks. Good job all the way around. I'm glad you're on my team. Oh, yeah. Michael didn't want to cooperate or get involved in testifying, but Mr. Norton kept advising him to cooperate. He said he had no choice. Okay, so as far as you know, your husband wasn't in the mood to commit suicide when he went there. No, no. He was mad at the lawyer. He would shoot the lawyer before he shot himself. Did he ever say anything to that effect? No, but he was mad at the lawyer. He said he thought the lawyer was working against him. Do you know where the money is? He left with money in the car. That's a good question. Yeah, your husband, what kind of business was he involved in? Internet gambling. That was related to the money laundering charges he was being brought up on? Yes. Some people who gamble on his service were laundering money, and the police, they thought he was involved in it. But he wasn't aware. He was a victim. Did your husband drink coffee? Why? It's just a question. Did he, did he like coffee? No. Tea. I never saw him drink coffee. Okay, so he wasn't a big fan of cappuccino or anything like that? No. Where's the money? I have no money right now. How do you expect me to get by? Just a fractured skull. Broken hip bone, she ruptured an artery, so she took a pretty good hit from the car. Yeah, so the car's traveling at a fairly good clip, what do you think? Well, I'd say so. The impact from the car broke the hip and the pelvis, so yeah. Yeah. You said you had something else? Right, I did. I got the woman from the church, I got her talks back, and there was a significant amount of rat poison in her system. Rat poison? Right, and that's an anticoagulant, so she was bleeding internally. Whether it was initially caused by the poison, I don't know, but it exacerbated the situation, that's for certain. Rat poison? How would she have gotten rat poison in her system? Grain. Wherever she was picking up that grain, maybe the train yards, somebody could have laid down rat poison to keep the vermin down. That's probably it. Rat poison, yeah. That's not the cause of death. The cause of death is still tuberculosis. Right. Okay. And I found a newspaper clipping in the inside pocket of her coat, a little change pocket yeah. you might find interesting. Oh, wait, what's in it? Well, you can read it yourself. There you go. Apparently, the priest there was one of the ones charged with molesting children back in the 50s. Well, thank you for pointing this out. Okay. Oh, yeah? Catch you later. Are you ready for messages? That depends. Um, got information about that deceased woman at the church? Oh, yeah, give that to me. Well, she hasn't been here that long, about a month. Okay. 
Uh, I checked with the uh, shelter in Edmonton, and they confirmed that she'd been there up until about a month ago. Okay, then you want to get back in touch with that uh, shelter in Edmonton, let them know all about the um, tuberculosis. Okay. Well, here's the interesting part. Are you listening? Okay. She was arrested for harassment of a priest in Edmonton about a year ago. Yeah, she stood up in church and, and was disrupting things during a sermon, accusing the priest of being a sexual predator. No way. Yeah. You got a name there, somebody I can call? Yeah, the priest's name is Feeney, and uh, I checked. He's uh, He was transferred here about three months ago. Feeney? Guess where? Same church? Same church. Do you have any information about where this man originally came from? Quebec. And the girl? Quebec, too. Okay. Roy Cardinal's a street dealer. Was, anyway. Mostly the hallucinogens, acid, ecstasy, mushrooms. It's a one-stop shopping with him. You had regular run-ins with him? Every night. He was a popular kid. He wasn't a bad guy, really, but he just had a mouth on him, you know. He was always getting into it with the club owners. How's that? Over what? Well, the bouncers kept trying to get him to clear off. He was supplying all the clubbers. Any clubs in particular that might have a grudge? You know, somebody that might take it personally, decide to take him somewhere, give him a good beating? Nobody I can think of. Maybe some of the other patrols can tell you. Yeah, who was working last night? You know that? Yeah, I know uh, Dino Rosario and Gloria... What's her name? They were on. They might have seen something. I was clearing out one of the squats, so I was busy most of the night. All right, thanks. We'll finish show. And what about Roy's friends? Anybody in particular? I'll see some faces today. Ask around. All right, thanks, man. Oh, I got a question for you. What's that? You know I'm coaching the under-19s at the Eastside Metro League? Yeah, yeah. How's that going? It's going good. I just need an assistant coach. I was wondering maybe if uh, you were up for it. Really? Yeah, just two nights a week, a couple hours, game on the weekends. Wow. Well, let me think about it. When, when do you need to know? Well, first practice is tonight underneath the lights of Chinatown. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. let me think about it. All right. I'll get back to you. Give me a call. Come on. Take it easy. Dominic. No. Uh, should I did deduce from that grin that you got the job? Yes, I did. You got the job? I got the job. Well, congratulations. I guess are in order. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'll be talking soon. So. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Oh, congratulations. That's all I can. I can say. I, I wish you all the best. I appreciate it, Dominic. Look, I just want to say that I hope bygones can be bygones, and you and I can start with a clean slate. I got to get up there, eh? Take it easy. Always do. OK, Bill. Hey, Mick. Hey. Hey, Suki. Are you still looking for an apartment? Yeah, sort of. Uh, I got a place coming up in my building you might want to take a look at. Really? What's it like? Uh, like a one bedroom, small kitchen, little balcony. I'll, I'll give you my number and I can show it to you if you want. Where is it? Uh, just down on the water, down on Alexander there. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'll call you. Yeah, in time. Okay. See ya. That sounds convenient, huh? Close to work like that? What you said was that she was a regular, that she slept here. That's what you said. Yeah, that's right. Now, she never talked to Father Feeney, is that right? No, I didn't say that. No, you didn't mention that. That's why I have to ask you about that now, please. OK. OK. Yeah, they talked. As a matter of fact, she used to disrupt services, late night services. She'd uh, wait in the wings until Father Feeney would come out, and then she'd go at him. She'd go at him? How? Do you remember me? Stuff along those lines. See, stuff along those lines. I consider that still kind of vague. She accused him of being a sexual deviant. And how did Father Feeney react to this? He asked me to remove her, and which I did, and, until I got sick of it. So you bounced her. That's when you started locking the doors. Is that what prompted that now? That was one of the reasons, but that wasn't the only reason, no. Is that Father Feeney? No. Father Feeney? Excuse me. Father Feeney. Damn. Father Feeney? Father! Sorry, uh, Father. My name's uh, Dominic Da Vinci. I'm with the coroner service. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Well, I got a couple of questions for you about a woman I think you're familiar with. As she died right here on your doorstep. Yes, of course. That was very unfortunate. Yeah. Well, what was your history there? A uh, history? Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you're driving at. Well, you were in Edmonton, she was in Edmonton, and then when you came down here, she came down here. And now, according to a police report, and uh, the word of your uh, your custodian over here. She had some accusations she made towards him. Yeah, look, I think you'll have to speak to the lawyer for the diocese about okay, it. Okay, that. That's it's good. Roger Muldoon, he's in the book. Muldoon, that's a pretty expensive lawyer. Hold it, one second, don't go away. I just had to ask you one more thing as I cut you off. 
before. You were going to tell me yeah. about some of those other reasons why you started closing the doors for these people. Uh, Peter, look, I would like it if you didn't answer any more of Mr. Da Vinci's questions. If he has any, he can do call it the lawyer. through the lawyer. Good afternoon. And I'm also going to call the Archbishop. Because this woman, she follows you right across the country. I say that you knew her as a young woman, and I bet she had some pretty unsavory things to say about yes, you. Good afternoon. All she wanted was some kind of acknowledgement. All she wanted was a resolution, an admission to you what you did to her, so she could put an amen to it. But you got the sanctuary you should have provided to her. Good afternoon. Is that how it works in your church, Father? You just turned this whole church right on his head. All right, come on, come on. Down straight. Keep it up. Jose, stay back. Jose, he's going to keep doing that to you all day if you don't stay back. Matthew, get in there for Dustin. Eric, take point. Hey. How you doing? Good, good, good. Thanks for coming out. No, it's just what I needed to shake things up a little. Yeah. Looks like you got some good players. Yeah, we got good players. Some of them are borderline, don't always show up. <laughs> but they got good skills, you know? Yeah. It's mostly their discipline they need to work on. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I guess you should introduce me and get started. Man. All right, all right. Everybody bring it in. Bring it in here. Let's go, gentlemen. Bring it in. All right, I'd like to introduce you to your new assistant coach. This is Mick Leary. Hey, guys. Had a call from the church lawyer about you. Okay. He'd like you to direct all further questions to him and to avoid Father Feeney. Oh, really? Yes, and having listened to him, it seems like a reasonable request given that, based on the evidence, there's absolutely no connection between the death of the homeless woman and Father Feeney, is there? Well, uh, you know, fine. Well, I read the uh, autopsy. It says that Mrs. Grace died from tuberculosis. Fine, fine. I'm agreeing with you. Good. OK. Um, my condolences on being passed over on the police chief position. Thanks. Well, no doubt you'll find or create other challenging opportunities for the future, huh? The next time? Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, as far as uh, Father Feeney is concerned, we don't want a restraining order, right? I'll restrain myself. Good. I'll restrain myself. Fixed it. Is it on this floor? Uh, no, it's one up. Uh, come on in. Uh, I gotta call the girl first. Let her know we're coming up. Huh? Hi. Night, Dom. Night. I have your keys, don't forget. I know, I won't forget. You don't want me to call you a cab? I'm gonna walk. It's just right here. Night. For your friend? The pigeon lady. Well, it hasn't been a great day here either, but yours is about to improve. Want it? How much do you want? Can you come and land on my arm? No? Yeah. I drink to you, my fine feathered friend. Better days to come.
it isn't over, visit DaVinci'sInQuest.tv. It's funniest family comedy. That's good. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Look. You get a chance, you know, ask the mayor about this dinner thing, okay? Oh, the mayor, he's going to be yelling at me. He's going to tell me all about it, that's for sure. Okay. I'm going to have to ask him anything. Take it easy. Let me know. What's the matter? I could just cry. I can't I can't remember where I put my car again. <laughs> that's not funny. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. Okay. 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 I started leading the interview, and then you took over. I was wondering if I was taking it the wrong direction. No, no, no. I apologize. I just lost my patience with the guy because all that bullshit about washing your hands being a natural reaction. He washed his hands because he knew it would make a gunshot residue test useless. I was getting around to that in case you were wondering. I just lost my patience. You think he shot the guy? Yeah, probably. I want to talk to Mr. Zhang's wife. I can just feel this guy swimming away. He's like a damn eel. That thing about the secretary going out for coffee, that's odd. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, uh... Suki asked me to find out if you were dating anybody. Really? What'd you say? Well, I said I didn't know, because I don't. I thought she was going out with somebody. I seem to remember something about that. No, no, that's over with. So, you want me to set something up, huh? Let her know you're going to give her a call? No, I think I can handle that. Just some of a bitch about that dog last night, right? Yeah. Good instincts, Lou. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm just on my way out. Walk with me, all right? How are you? Well, all right. Good. How's it looking? Uh, well, there's dissension. What? Yeah, basically, the police board is split right down the middle. And what it comes down to is the issue of the red light district. They want assurances that that's not going to come up again. So I cave on the red light district and I'm in? Well, better help. I mean, if I could take that back to the board that that's a dead issue, I mean, that might shift the vote. It might shift the vote. So what else is there? Well, that's the main objection. Well, okay, this is on the issues. That's good. Yeah. I mean, there's a, uh, well, there's a character issue, too. What? Right? The issue of your, how should I, uh, outspokenness. What, is my general big mouth, or is it in, in particular? Yeah, in particular, your views on the safe injection site, and also your general habit of poking a stick in the eye of the Americans over their drug policy. They keep calling me up, they keep asking my opinion. Look, here, this is now the Olympic City. I know. All right, so in view of that fact, a less confrontational approach might be prudent. That's all. Okay. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I swear to God, I will. Yeah. And I'll take that to the police board, and it will be very appreciative. All right. Oh, uh, I suppose you heard about my car being involved in that hit and run, huh? Yeah, I did. Uh, that hasn't been confirmed yet, though. It was spotted near the scene. That's all I know at this point. Did they find the car? Uh, no. Oh, I, I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> Whether it's my car or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's a terrible thing. It's terrible. I guess that girl was pretty young. 16. I got to phone her parents. Nobody can reach them. They're apparently they're, they're sailing around in the Caribbean somewhere. Well, let me know. I'll call them too. Hey, did you ever hear exactly what happened? It's one of those things. We may never find. I don't suppose any of these witnesses have come forward and given you any useful information. Or... The uh, two constables here say they saw a silver Mercedes go by. Silver Mercedes. Yeah, a little block down that way. And then about five minutes later, they got this call. So that's all we got. Any plays? A little partial, but yeah, it's probably not related. Man. Any sign of current robbers? Any sign that the car tried to avoid? No. Nothing. No, no name. Well, first name might be Alice, okay? She had on a bracelet. It's all broken. The kind with these individual letters, right? You see? I sorted out the letters two or three times. Came up with Alice. See that? Alice. your time that the coroner thought you might want to take a look. And we thought this might be significant, so we taped it off. Great. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, first day, first call. So I thought I'd better play safe. You got the gig. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, you're working for the coroner now. Yeah, yeah, first day. Uh, da Vinci was supposed to go around with me, but he got caught up with something else, and uh, I'm here by myself. Right on. Show us what we got. Yeah. Young kid over here. Looks like a crane got him. Lost a leg. See that? Uh, but it looks like he took a beating before that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He looks native, huh? Yeah. His clothes are looking pretty new. Yeah, he had a bunch of dope on him. A little weed, some acid. Looks like maybe uh, ecstasy. I got his name, Roy. Roy something. Uh, French sounding last. 
things. I, I got his wallet, too. All right, let's see here. Looks like Roy Cardinal. Could be Métis. Uh, yeah, I, I found his other shoe over on the other side there. I left it over there on the other side of the track. And I took a, a walk around while I was waiting, and there was a blood trail. I, I think it was a blood trail. Let's uh, go take a look at this other body part. Yeah. May want to watch for some teeth around. Looks like he's maybe lost a couple in this beating here. All right. Did you get your pictures yet? Oh, no, I, I forgot. That's OK. You know, I was up all night trying to figure out how to, how to download this thing. Well, it's OK. Just snap off a few now. Close ups. I, I'm, I'll erase all these other ones first here. Uh, <laughs> Hey, there's a picture of my wife. See? Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, and the kids. How <laughs> many kids you got there? Three. Huh? Hell raises, all of them. I don't know who's worse. <laughs> Her or them. But I never saw one. Did he drive to the lawyer's office, do you know? Yes. Why? Well, we haven't been able to locate his car. Well, he drove. Do you know what happened to the money he had with him? I wasn't aware that he had any money with him. How much are we talking about? Well, I don't know exactly. Several hundred thousand dollars. Several hundred thousand. Well, that's interesting. OK, can you hang on a second? Just wait here. I'll be right back. It's the fourth time. Look, normally I wouldn't complain, but it's the fourth time I've ordered from you guys, and you put salsa on the bagel again. And I specifically said, no salsa. Leo, I have Mrs. Zhang an interview. Hang on. I'm dealing with this here. I don't like salsa. I specifically said, no salsa. Well, then why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off, then? I said, why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off? Have you ever tried to scrape salsa off a of cream cheese? It melts. Leo, Mrs. Zhang is saying there's a load of money missing. I don't want you to miss this. OK, all right. My mom's making rich chocolate oval tea. Yeah! My kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And I love that there are vitamins and minerals not found in Nesquik powder. We're back. Who wants Ovaltine? Me! Let's make more. More Ovaltine, please. I can now do what I want, go where I will, and I'm free again. My name is Frank Paris. My name is Mary Simmons. I'm Babs Miller. My name is Vera Brown. Real people, real lives, improve dramatically because they call the Scooter Store. Hi, I'm Dan Weston. Here's what our customers have to say. I'd say the biggest impact the chairs had on my life is just the independence that I got back. Just to sit outside and see the sunshine was more of a blessing than I can tell anybody. The power chair gives me the independence that I need to get around. I, I love the power chair. I was having trouble walking, and now I can get in my uh, chair and just fly up the hall, and I love it. <laughs> one word that would describe the power chair is independence. This is wonderful. We're America's largest power chair provider, so you can relax, knowing we'll take care of all the details for you. The scooter store worked miraculously with my doctor. I mean, I was just amazed. They were able to take care of everything. So all I had to do was just wait for it to arrive. I didn't have to do anything. And if we pre-qualify you for a new power chair and Medicare denies your claim, we allow you to keep your new power chair at no cost. When Medicare declined payment, the scooter store told me that I didn't have to worry about the chair was mine. I love mine. There's another footprint, just the one on the side of the vehicle here. Mm. And it's not very deep. This isn't very comfortable, but it's private anyway. I'm sorry for your loss. My condolences. Must be a very hard time. I don't understand. Where did he get the gun? Your husband didn't own a gun? Well, maybe. But I never saw one. Did he drive to the lawyer's office, do you know? Yes. Why? Well, we haven't been able to locate his car. Well, he drove. Do you know what happened to the money he had with him? I wasn't aware that he had any money with him. How much are we talking about? Well, I don't know exactly. Several hundred thousand dollars. Several hundred thousand. Well, that's interesting. OK, can you hang on a second? Just wait here. I'll be right back. It's the fourth time. 
Look, normally I wouldn't complain, but it's the fourth time I've ordered from you guys and you put salsa on the bagel again. And I specifically said, no salsa. Leo, I have Mrs. Zhang in interview. Hang on, I'm dealing with this here. I don't like salsa. I specifically said, no salsa. Well, then why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off then? I said, why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off? Have you ever tried to scrape salsa off a of cream cheese? It melts. Leo, Mrs. Zhang is saying there's a load of money missing. I don't want you to miss this. Okay, all right. My mom's making rich chocolate Ovaltine. Yeah! My kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And I love that there are vitamins and minerals not found in Nesquik powder. We're back. Who wants Ovaltine? Me! Let's make more. More Ovaltine, please! I can now do what I want, go where I will, and I'm free again. My name is Frank Paris. My name is Mary Simmons. I'm Babs Miller. My name is Vera Brown. Real people, real lives, improve dramatically because they call the scooter store. Hi, I'm Dan Weston. Here's what our customers have to say. I'd say the biggest impact the chairs had on my life is just the independence that I got back. Just to sit outside and see the sunshine was more of a blessing than I can tell anybody. The power chair gives me the independence that I need to get around. I, I love the power chair. I was having trouble walking, and now I can get in my uh, chair and just fly up the hall, and I love it. <laughs> one word that would describe the power chair is independence. This is wonderful. We're America's largest power chair provider, so you can relax, knowing we'll take care of all the details for you. The scooter store worked miraculously with my doctor. I mean, I was just amazed. They were able to take care of everything. So all I had... This woman and Father Feeney, is there? Well, you know, fine. Well, I read the uh, autopsy. It says that Mrs. Grace died from tuberculosis. Fine, fine. I'm agreeing with you. Good. OK. Um, my condolences on being passed over on the police chief position. Thanks. Well, no doubt you'll find or create other challenging opportunities for the future, huh? I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, as far as uh, Father Feeney is concerned, we don't want a restraining order, right? I'll restrain myself. Good. I'll restrain myself. Fixed it. Is it on this floor? Uh, no, it's one up. Uh, come on in. Uh, I gotta call the girl first. Let her know we're coming up. Huh? Hi. Night, Dom. Hi. I have your keys, don't forget. I know, I won't forget. You don't want me to call you a cab? I'm gonna walk. It's just right here. Night. For your friend? The pigeon lady. Well, hasn't been a great day here either, but yours is about to improve. Want it? How much do you want? You come and land on my arm? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. I drink to you, my fine feathered friend. Somebody over here and have them scrape it off, then. I said, why don't you send somebody over here and have them scrape it off? Have you ever tried to scrape salsa off a of cream cheese? It melts. Leo, Mrs. Zhang is saying there's a load of money missing. I don't want you to miss this. Okay, all right. My mom's making rich chocolate Ovaltine. Yeah! My kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And I love that there are vitamins and minerals not found in Nesquik powder. We're back. Who wants Ovaltine? Me! Let's make more. More Ovaltine! I can now do what I want, go where I will, and I'm free again. My name is Frank Paris. My name is Mary Simmons. I'm Babs Miller. My name is Vera Brown. Real people, real lives improve dramatically because they call the scooter store. Hi, I'm Dan Weston. Here's what our customers have to say. I'd say the biggest impact the chairs had on my life is just the independence that I got back. Just to sit outside and see the sunshine was more of a blessing than I can tell anybody. The power chair gives me the independence that I need to get around. I, I love the power chair. I was having trouble walking, and now I can get in my uh, chair and just fly up the hall, and I love it. <laughs> One word that would describe the power chair is independence. This is wonderful. We're America's largest power chair provider so you can relax, knowing we'll take care of all the details for you. The scooter store worked miraculously with my doctor. I mean, I was just amazed. They were able to take care of everything, so all I had to do was just wait for it to arrive. I didn't have to do anything. And if we pre-qualify you for a new power chair and Medicare denies your claim, we allow you to keep your new power chair at no cost. When Medicare declined payment, the scooter store told me that I didn't have to worry about the chair was mine. I love mine. Absolutely love it. A life-changing experience is what I call the scooter store. And I think the power chair was like a miracle. Now it's your turn. Call the scooter store today. Change your life today. Call the Scooter Store at 1-866-210-3187. That's 1-866-210-3187. Hi, can you tell me, how are the rooms at that hotel? Very nice curtains. And TV has video games. Uh-huh. And, and the rooms at your hotel? There's a bed and some tables. Right. Want to talk to someone who really knows hotels? Call the experts at Hotels.com. They've got the inside scoop on over 70,000 properties. They're available 24-7, and they'll always find you the best price guaranteed. Just log on or call 800-2-HOTELS-NOW. Hotels.com. You know hotels. How you doing? Pretty good. What have we got here? Well, a uh, church security guy gave us a call. Found her curled up right here. Church security, is this him over there? Come on over. Yeah. What can you tell us about this lady? She used to come by for the soup and sandwich at lunchtime, and uh, she'd come by at night sometimes to take a load off her feet. You know where she lived? No, I wouldn't know. No. You wouldn't know? All right. Oh, it's over this in the pocket here. Oh, what have we got here? It's like uh, different kinds of greens to me. It's barley, it's wheat. It's... What do you think? She used to sit on the steps during the day and feed the pigeons. She's the pigeon lady. This is her, the pigeon lady? Yeah, I've seen her right here on the steps. I was driving by. She'd just stand there with her arms out. Yeah. Yeah, there'd be half a dozen of the things perched on her. Oh, man. Well, you know, she's all curled up here. She's got herself all nice and cozy for the night. And to me, you see, the strips of cardboard laid down there suggest to me homelessness. What about you? Yeah. Well, I thought you guys uh, had your doors open all night. Yeah, we used to. You don't do that anymore? No, we stopped. It just got so, you know, too many people were using this as a permanent place to sleep, so uh, we locked it up at 10.30. When did that start happening? Uh, not long, about a month or so ago. So here this woman, she shows up, she's just looking for a piece of sanctuary, and then she finds out that you don't offer that anymore? Yeah, no, we don't do that anymore, right? That's pretty rough. Well, you know, I'm really not seeing any obvious injuries here, so to me, this might just be a case of, uh, just gave up the ghost. Maybe. What's that, midnight? 
Midnight, right? Yeah, midnight. Oh, I'm up at you now, okay? <laughs> Who owns Granville Street? I can't hear you. Who owns Granville Street? <laughs> That's what. Dino. I can't hear you, Roy. Who owns Granville Street? You do. Not so good looking now. He's not so pretty now. Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna go for a walk. It's too loud. Wait two minutes. I'll come with you. Okay, hey, we'll hurry up. I don't know if this is your call, but I thought you'd want to see this. This is Brian's garage. Yeah, I got the call from the landlady. She's inside. She's a bit broken up. Somebody shot her dog. Shot her dog? When was that? Anybody witness it? No, about an hour ago. She only just got the dog. It's one of those rescues. It's all further questions to him and to avoid Father Feeney. Oh, really? Yes, and having listened to him, it seems like a reasonable request, given that based on the evidence, there's absolutely no connection between the death of the homeless woman and Father Feeney, is there? Well, uh, you know, fine. Well, I read the uh, autopsy. It says that Mrs. Grace died from tuberculosis. Fine, fine. I'm agreeing with you. Good. Okay. Um, my condolences on being passed over on the police chief position. Thanks. Well, no doubt you'll find or create other challenging opportunities for the future, huh? You think so? Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, as far as... Uh, Father Feeney is concerned, we don't want a restraining order, right? I'll restrain myself. Good. I'll restrain myself. Fixed it. Is it on this floor? Uh, no, it's one up. Uh, come on in. Uh, I gotta call the girl first. Let her know we're coming up. Oh. Hi. Night, Dom. Night. I have your keys, don't forget. I know, I won't forget. You don't want me to call you a cab? I'm gonna walk this just right here. Night. For your friend? The pigeon lady. Well, hasn't been a great day here either, but yours is about to improve. Want it? How much do you want? No. Where's the money? I have no money right now. How do you expect me to get by? She has a fractured skull. Broken hip bone, she ruptured an artery, so she took a pretty good hit from the car. Yeah, so the car's traveling at a fairly good clip, what do you think? Well, I'd say so. The impact from the car broke the hip and the pelvis, so yeah. Yeah. You said you had something else? Right, I did. I got the woman from the church, I got her talks back, mm -hmm. and there was a significant amount of rat poison in her system. Rat poison? Right, and that's an anticoagulant, so she was bleeding internally. Whether it was initially caused by the poison, I don't know, but it exacerbated the situation, that's for certain. Rat poison? How would she have gotten rat poison in her system? Grain. Wherever she was picking up that grain, maybe the train yards, somebody could have laid down rat poison to keep the vermin down. That's probably it. 
Rat poison. Yep. That's not the cause of death. The cause of death is still tuberculosis. Right. Okay. And I found a newspaper clipping in the inside pocket of a coat. A little change pocket yeah. you might find interesting. Oh, wait, what's on it? Well, you can read it yourself. There you go. Okay. Apparently, the priest there was one of the ones charged with molesting children back in the 50s. Well, thank you for pointing this out. Okay. Oh, yeah? Catch you later. Are you ready for messages? That depends. Um, got information about that deceased woman at the church? Oh, yeah, give that to me. Well, she hasn't been here that long, about a month. Okay. Uh, I checked with uh, Shelter in Edmonton, and they confirmed that she'd been there up until about a month ago. Okay, then you want to get back in touch with that uh, Shelter in Edmonton, let them know all about the um, tuberculosis. Okay, well, here's the interesting part. Are you listening? Okay. She was arrested for harassment of a priest in Edmonton about a year ago. Yeah, she stood up in church and, and was disrupting things during a sermon, accusing the priest of being a sexual predator. No way. Yeah. You got a name there, somebody I can call? Yeah, the priest's name is Feeney, and uh, I checked. He's, uh, he was transferred here about three months ago. Feeney? Guess where? Same church? Same church. Do you have any information about where this man originally came from? Quebec. And the girl? Quebec, too. Okay. Roy Cardinal's a street dealer. Was, anyway. Mostly the hallucinogens, acid, and ecstasy mushrooms. It's a one-stop shopping with him. You had regular run-ins with him? Every night. He was a popular kid. He wasn't a bad guy, really, but he just had a mouth on him. You know, he was always getting into it with the club owners. How's that? Over what? Well, the bouncers kept trying to get him to clear off. He was supplying all the clubbers. Any clubs in particular that might have a grudge? You know, somebody that might take it personally, decide to take him some or give him a good beating? Nobody I can think of. Maybe some of the other patrols can tell you. Yeah, who was working last night? You know that? Yeah, I know uh, Dino Rosario and Gloria... What's her name? They were on. They might have seen something. <laughs> See, where her hips punctured right through her skin, so I don't know. Maybe she's a severed murder or something. Real young. I don't, know. I don't suppose any of these witnesses have come forward and given you any useful information. Or... The uh, two constables here say they saw a silver Mercedes go by. Silver Mercedes? Yeah, a little that block down that way. And then about five minutes later, they got this call, so that's all we got. Any place? Well, partial, but yeah, it's probably not related. Yeah. Any sign of current rubbers? Any sign that the car tried to avoid? No. Nothing. No, no name. Well, first name might be Alice, okay? She had on a bracelet. It's all broken. The kind of these individual letters, right? You see? I sorted out the letters two or three times. Came up with Alice. See? Alice. So, Alice. I didn't want to waste your time, but the coroner thought you might want to take a look. And he thought this might be significant, so we taped it off. Great. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, first day, first call, so I thought I'd better play safe. You got the gig. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you're working for the coroner now. Yeah, yeah, first day. Uh, da Vinci was supposed to go around with me, but he got caught up with something else, and uh, I'm here by myself. Right on. Show us what we got. Yeah. Young kid over here. Looks like a crane got him. Lost a leg. See that? Uh, but it looks like he took a beating before that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He looks native, huh? Yeah. His clothes are looking pretty new. Yeah, he had a bunch of dope on him. A little weed, some acid. Looks like maybe uh, ecstasy. I got his name, Roy. Roy something. Uh, French sounding last name. I think. I, I got his wallet too. All right, let's see here. Looks like Roy Cardinal. Could be Metis. Uh, yeah, I, I found his other shoe over on the other side there. I left it over there on the other side of the track. I took a, a walk around while I was waiting, and there was a blood trail. I, I think it was a blood trail. Let's, uh, Go take a look at this other body part. Yeah. May want to watch for some teeth around. Looks like he's maybe lost a couple in this beating here. All right. Did you get your pictures yet? Oh. No. I, I forgot. That's OK. You know, I was up all night trying to figure out how to, how to download this thing. Well, it's OK. Just snap off a few now. Close up. I'll, I'm, I'll erase all these other ones first here. Uh, 
Hey, there's a picture of my wife. See? Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, and the kids. <laughs>